uh, we are saying that our current level is 85 tires. Somebody bought uh, 20 tires. Okay? Because after one day. And we get... Um, we get uh, how many? 65 tires. Now that's a bit out of uh, proportion, but uh, the idea is we bought 20 tires and so now we are left with 65 tires. Do we reorder? Uh, do not reorder because we haven't crossed the reorder point, right? And somebody bought another 20 tires. Now we are left with 45. Do we reorder? Yes. Reorder because we have just crossed all right, the reorder point. Given, given another day, our inventory level will drop from 45 to 25. Do we reorder further? Obviously no, because the previously reordered tires, they are on their way already. Yeah. So we only do that once, uh, and that time is, that event triggered moment is the first time we cross over the reorder point. Then we reorder. And that's the whole idea of calling it reorder point, right? So it's a tr event trigger uh, watermark that will tell us to reorder. Okay, now uh, let's come back to our slides here. So here we have this ACT example that is giving us some numbers. And essentially, we already have the, the formulas and the ability to work out, right? So we are given all the costs and annual costs of uh, out of stock. Oh, okay, we are not talking about this part. No out of stock. Uh, I, I just leave the discussion here so that we can uh, be aware of such possibility that uh, there's a cost to out of stock. No, uh, not out of stock. I beg your pardon. Uh, short. Okay. Shortage of, the, uh, shortage of uh, short selling. So here we have purchase cost, ordering cost, holding cost. Okay, uh, shortage cost, no shortage cost because we don't allow for a short sale. Uh, and very quickly we have the patterns here that we have gone through. All right, and we have the reorder points all given. And this is the part where you will be asked uh, several questions about the conclusion. Right, so having the formulas allow us to do all these very important predictions. Purchase cost is going to be C times D, right? Uh, no matter how we slice up the D, whether half or a third or a quarter, uh, or lump them together as a single D, we do not get discount. So annually, we will still incur C times D, C being the unit cost. Annual ordering cost, we work that out. Annual holding cost, we have worked that out, right? And the total cost is this, all right? So you'll be asked like, how many number of uh how many orders are there in a year for a particular business? Then we have that basically is the notion of number of triangles in the business, and uh that corresponds with our number of triangles formula. What about the time between orders? Otherwise known as the cycle time, that if you have one triangle in a year, the base of the triangle that is Time between orders will be one year. If you have two triangles dividing the year, then you have uh, half a year as the time between orders. And so if you have D over Q number of triangles in a year, you will have one over D over Q uh, years apart between the orders. So essentially that's Q over D. Okay, so quick example, example one uh, order we get the time be between orders will be one year two triangles we have half a year i write in fraction because then it, the the relationship is clearer right uh, four triangles, we get PDO equals to one quarter of a year. So it goes to show that uh, TBO is just one over number of triangles in a year. 
and we have that as a formula and that's 1 divided by d over q so the formula is going to be q over d uh, now pay attention because the unit is always years if you get a small tiny fraction uh, multiply that by the number of days per year remember we have that all right the question will tell you that uh, okay then that you then you will get number of days okay uh, other than that uh, we basically uh, have covered everything here all right and the uh, slides here shows you some comparison between current policy which doesn't listen to eoq uh, versus EOQ policy that adheres to using EOQ. Okay, and we get annual ordering cost being exactly equal to holding cost. That is not by chance, that's always the case. Uh, so the total variable cost, which is our objective function, is definitely predictably already known, right, to be better than any other values that you choose for Q. So here Q is higher than the EOQ, and even when it's lower than EOQ, for example, if you take Q equals to 200, you will find that the total cost will still be higher than the total cost S will be incurred when you use Q equals to EOQ. And the cost curve is always uh, like this. That is, we have a U-shaped curve. The linear line is the holding cost. The more we have, the more we incur because it's H times Q over Two. The more we buy at a time, because Q is the quantity we order at a time, the, the more we hold. The ordering cost, on the other hand, because it is insensitive to Q, uh, it becomes a hyperbolic curve, right? So Q times S is a constant divided by Q. Uh, we have a hyperbolic curve, basically a curve curving downwards. When you add them together, you get this very distinct U-shaped curve that is uh, always indicative of the presence of a minimum point, right? So this is the point that we are interested in. This is our EOQ point. Our EOQ point is here, and our operating uh, level, the total cost, is the minimum if we choose our quantity to order at EOQ. All right. Remember, this saving is is. Uh, automatic what you do is not to borrow more money to invest more in infrastructure then you get the savings what you do is very simple when you pick up the phone uh, to order instead of saying i want a thousand tires you just say the eoq number 573 tires right so when you do that automatically you will enjoy lower lowest in fact uh, total cost of operations in a year in terms of inventory management so that's that's very cost free right that's just saying a different number and you enjoy this uh, this benefit um, so so definitely something very significant uh, with huge returns because we you don't do more you just basically do a different thing that is you know as simple as saying a different number you just get the benefits from that all right so that basically concludes our discussion for the first um, segment.